Paul Schaefer and the Aristocrats. Later on the program, uh, Z Show, the world's only performing goldfish. It sounds a little like I'm beating a dead horse, doesn't it? No, no. You know, in the old days, by the way, that would be entertainment for television. Before, <laughs> before the FCC stepped in, uh -huh. they'd, they'd have, you know, they'd be, tonight we beat a dead horse. No, but no you, can't, you can't, you can't do, do that, that anymore. anymore because, you know, it's, it's America and that it don't go. Maybe in no. Canada, who knows? Well. I like having this uh, next guy on the show because he always comes out and uh, doesn't make any difference. He always offends somebody. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> It's funny, he comes out here and, and uh, people get pissed off. I just love that. Right. You know, when he's not making one delightful Beethoven movie after another, our first guest <laughs> is the host of his very own successful talk show on CNBC. Please welcome back Charles Grodin. Charles? How you doing? Fine. Fine. Oh, you look great. You look nice. That's you a very, very nice much. jacket. Is that, is that camel hair or something? No, this that's, is, uh, that's very nice. What is that? That is camel hair. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful jacket. How about a nice hand for the jacket? Right. 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 Pete Harnish you is, uh, you is the pitcher. The, excuse me oh, a second. Yeah. Pete Harnish, the, the, the baseball pitcher he's right. been talking about, who's the Met pitcher who can't mm -hmm. sleep and is having all these problems, is a very close friend of mine. And I'm a major Met fan. And the reason he can't sleep and he's having the difficulties, he was chewing tobacco, and he's addicted to tobacco for several years. That's the why he can't do it. He was supposed to start the home game, the home opener, so he's tense and nervous. I don't feel this is a subject for humor. But he does! So, all right. See? Already. He's already pissed me off. See? <laughs> Hey, and man. another thing, it's not that easy to come out here, and you guys clearly have too much tension between you because he <laughs> fouls up his lines and stuff. It's tense. Two guys don't get along, and I don't get along with either of you. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you, you have the, uh, the show there, the CNBC show, uh, but you haven't been on this show for like two years. For is two years. It? Uh, why uh, is that? I, why won't you come and be well, on the show? I, I wasn't on for two years because the last time I, I honestly felt that I had hurt your feelings. <laughs> I did, I did, because we were, I don't know, it somehow came out of a, something that we had, we were going to talk about, right. but I said in there about being isolated and not getting out and around, they were kidding me that I don't, and I said, but you don't have any friends who aren't on your payroll. <laughs> yeah, well. And you laughed, yeah, but I yeah. think it hurt his feelings. No, no, it didn't hurt my feelings, because nothing could be farther from the truth. I, by the way, I don't think I've ever mentioned this before on, on the show, I am a people person. <laughs> it's true. I, didn't, I, wasn't, uh, no. I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of that. What I like to do on a Saturday, get up early and go to the mall and just find a nice, comfortable bench and spend the day people watching. Can you give me the name of one friend you have who's not on your payroll? Uh, oh, God. Jeez. Um, uh, Enrique? You, know, you don't have any. Do you have any friends that are on your payroll? <laughs> But I'll tell you something, as much as I might have offended, you've offended you me. You didn't offend me. Well, all right, but you've offended me. Oh, I have not. Yes, you have. You have no feelings. No, you've offended me. <laughs> you, you, no know, you know, you you know no what's you know really offensive to me? Oh, please. No, no, no. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, sitting here, I am also on my own show, hosting my own show on CNBC, CNBC. right opposite him. With the same jacket? With this jacket. No, not this jacket. No, not this jacket, jacket ladies and no. gentlemen. That a beauty? And, and you, clearly, you clearly don't see me as a threat to your uh, popularity or ratings that you would come on you because Larry King wouldn't have me on his show because he sees me as a threat Let me to tell take you something. his audience. Larry King is a bonehead. <laughs> That's all you need to know there. Larry, Larry has been married 18 times. I'll start taking Larry seriously when he makes it an even 20. <laughs> Uh, we asked if I could be on Larry's show. Right. And they said, well, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's the breaking stories all the time, and, and Netanyahu's coming, mm -hmm. and Arafat's coming, and, every, you know, and, you know, it's kind of that way. Then you look at the show, and on the weekend, a retrospective of the career of Wes Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm telling you. Yeah. 
so uh, are you, now I know we've covered this in the past, but it's been so long since you've been here. Will you make more films now, or are you pretty much uh, ensconced comfortably and, and uh, con confident with your television show now? Would you, would you use this camera more? Because when I look this way, I look better than when I look the other. Believe me, stay with that and I'll answer the question. Now, <laughs> do me a favor. I, I couldn't hear the intro. I'm you, sorry. You what? have access to your intro? <laughs> The intro, when you introduced me. Oh, I didn't yeah. hear what right, you this said. Little, this little thing I'd, I'd like start. to know what you said. Uh, when he's not making one delightful Beethoven movie after another. <laughs> Our first guest wait is... Wait a minute. Hold it a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That, hold it a minute. Hold it. That's how you said it? Well, yeah. That's how I read it. Here, I'll just You're supposed to get the you. crowd excited. Please. Say something. What did you say before oh, I came out to get best. everybody uh, looking forward to this? Dave. Mess? There you go. Enjoy that. Use that on your own show. First one. Tell me about your show. Now, your show, all of a sudden, your show is like firing line. It's, you know, it's like crossfire. It's, it's like one uh, serious topic after another. Now, We're you... changing the show as of Monday. Really? I just decided <laughs> to change it. But that's no, not, that's no, we, not really the... we really are. We really are. Seriously, how the show I'm going to give, give you a bullet. Now, I'm not supposed to talk about this because you want to make sure it works yeah. before you right. announce you're doing it. But it used to be it, more I'm... of a lighter fare, yeah, you know, a salute going, to Wes Sanders. What, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come. Wes Sanders, that's how he got that <laughs> retrospective. Uh... <laughs> And for now, I'm going to come out and I'm going to say what's on my mind, right. you know, like, you know, issues. Like Regis was on. He, his issue was that Donald Duck didn't get uh, sufficient attention. Mickey Mouse got uh -huh. too much attention. Well, that's, that's Regis. That's just know. crap. What are we talking yeah, about there? Yeah, that's what he wanted to talk about. Yeah. But, but I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to have like four people, and we take questions from all around the country mm -hmm. on video. I don't know what the questions are. Oh, the people that videotape the questions. And, and then around you play the back. country, we take them to the bureau, our different bureaus. Well, why don't you do it on the phone lines? You have no, this is like video. Them? You see people around the country saying, Which, how do you keep a successful mm -hmm. marriage together? They asked right. Regis, and he said, uh, he said you, how do you do that? How do you make a marriage? He says, it, it has to do with your ability to take punishment. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, you know, that's cute. You yeah, know, it's, it's kind of cute, yeah. yeah. But you anyway, know, Larry King takes calls, you know. Yeah, I don't take calls. Topeka, I, I, Kansas, I you have a question for Liza Minnelli. You know, that kind of thing. Let me ask you something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Larry King. I was just dying to do that. Larry I'm sorry. King. I just wanted to do that. Uh, uh, Regis likes to do uh, I wonder if you, I think Regis drove me over here. Regis, well, you know where Regis <laughs> likes it? Regis says, Altoona, go ahead. Yeah, that's Regis. Right, yeah. But uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're knocking, Reed. I've been on your show for, when did you first have it? Lawrence, you... Kansas, do you have a question for Jane Meadows? <laughs> <laughs> no, so you have all these bad things to say about Regis, and, and according to what you just signed, you have nice stuff to say about me. How many like, times have I you like been you. on uh, Larry King's show? Uh, half a dozen times. And how many times have you been on my show? Uh, never! Never! Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, you yeah, have a you show? Oh. Yeah, that's what I... <laughs> <laughs> it's an old joke. Come on, I look it's an good. old joke. I look good. I want to tell you something. A couple of a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, up in uh, Connecticut, and I was uh, dropped into a little store to do some shopping. And a very nice, uh, very polite, very well groomed young man of like uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old came up to me, introduced me as your son. I was completely bowled over and flattered that he would uh, introduced uh, himself as my son to you. He said he introduced you as my son. You're not my say, son. Oh, no, no, no. We've he, known each yeah, other for you quite a bit. Can't, but, you can't know. trust anything I'm saying tonight. Yeah, but yeah. he introduced himself to me as your son. Is that right? right? Yeah. yeah. That's Seemed right. like a very nice kid. I heard about that, and and uh, he, he said, "I'm I'm Charles Grodin's son," and and uh, it was reported back to me that you said, "Oh, good for you." <laughs> That's what I said. And then my wife, you yeah. know, standing over across the place, said he thought it would be all right uh, to for him to come me. over and say hello <laughs> yeah. since my husband saved your ass 20 times in the past That's on right. television. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what that, but I have yeah. for years. Forgive me. And it's a, you have a close family, you know? A close family? Yeah, you're all together. Are you looking to, to come to be with a family? No, no, I just, I just, we don't. Yeah, we... This, this is back on you don't have any friends, not on the payroll. You're up there. You want to hang out with me? You know what we could do? We could chase squirrels. You have squirrels up there? <laughs> you want to chase squirrels someday? We, we squirrels and you, you, if office. you catch it, you can eat it. <laughs> Oh, boy, well. Yeah, yeah, see, I knew that would get you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or in my case, you catch it and make a hair piece out of it. You can. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Put, put your head down. It's not bad. You look great. You look <laughs> yeah, great. I look great. Let's uh, give us a tease about the big show. What's coming up? What do you get going really on? We're really going to do stuff. The... I, I wanted to do this a long time. But you've been doing stuff all along. People like your show. Well, it's doing you. very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank daughter. you. Thank you. You over there. Thank you particularly.
It's you the know, best thing. Ought, it's the ought, most exciting you, thing that's ever You ought to get on there every night and just try to piss somebody off. Just every, no, I'm not, every I'm not night. I'm do that. I just do that here. And, and I hope no one thinks that I'm actually like this. We're just friends and you're just yeah, kidding I'm around. I'm just kidding around. Yeah. Because, if, the, 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 ladies and gentlemen, the reason I do this, if I didn't do this, I'd come out and say hi. He'd say hi. Mm -hmm. He'd say, how's the show going? I said, great. I really we don't want enjoy that. it. We don't want yeah, I feel it's a real privilege yeah. to have a show like this. He says, well, how many days do you do it? We want big time wrestling. We want Vince McMahon. You can't do that. You can't. But a lot of people do television. They say, you know, I'm so excited. My new the movie is opening in May. I'm so excited. It's such yeah. a wonderful time. It'll be going in two weeks. I love yeah, the director, exactly. and sure. I love you, and yeah. I love the Nobody audience. That. Nobody wants that. Exactly. All right. <sighs> anyway. Uh, so anyway, the uh, what are we going to do? We'll be the, back. Oh, oh, I think you have to leave now. <laughs> is that right? Is you see what I'm saying? Yeah, you see what I'm talking about? You're a lovely man, really. Thank you. You're really a lovely thank man. You. Thank you. You had a great film career. I hope you, I hope you consider making some more films, because you're just terrific well, as an actor. thank you very one much. One of my favorite, one of my favorite, actual, legitimately funny actors. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm not going to do any more movies, but... Uh, never, ever? I'm, no, I'm never going to do that again. I've, I've really found the right, right thing for me. What about you and me? What about you and me? You and me where? What? Doing what? Doing what? Like Doing what? Like Chasing squirrels? squirrels? No, the thing you did with what? De Niro. What? The, 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 the thing you did with De Niro. We did that with De Niro. Do it with me now. Do it with you. Do it like number two. It'll be the sequel. Regis wanted to do it with us. All right, the three of us. The four of us. You, me, Regis. Who's do we leave out? De Niro. Oh, yeah, no, no. I think De Niro left himself out of that group. Well, uh, Charles, I'd love it's to go on talking pleasure. with you all night. I thought there for a the second we were going to, but you right. have to. I know you have to catch a. Uh, would you find? <laughs> would you feel that I was ripping you off if I did a top five list? No, I mean, my show's cable. You just I the think top the world five. of you. And your daughter? Is your daughter still on my, the program? My daughter lovely, is uh, is on the show woman, and she's yeah. appearing. And I think she's going to be appearing here as a stand up. Great, love to have her. Great, good, good for you. All right, we'll see. I don't know. No, I agree. Well, we'll have Completely. Time. We'll get acquainted at the party no after question. the show. Yeah. All right. Appreciate Charles Grodin, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with David Allen Greer. subscribers everywhere know our first guest as the host of his very own television talk show. Here he is, one of the greats, a legend in this business, Charles Grodin. Charles! Where, hey, where the hell are you doing? Charles, get over here, buddy. Come on. This is this not working? cable. We can't waste time. Is get over here. working? Wait a minute. What's the matter? You know, he, a lot of people don't want to come on the show because they feel that he's, he's not nice or afraid to come on and stuff like that. And I'm not because I've been coming on for many Listen, years. You're a good, good friend and, of ours. I, Thank you very much, Charles. Yeah, but that's not what you just said when I came on. He, he actually, he said, he said, go, he said, go yourself. That's not true. Yes, you did. Is that, that's what he said. He just said, go screw yourself. Did you not? No, I didn't did say you that. Did you not? No, you're making Did you not? No, you're I'm making asking it up. you. No, did you say, say it? it? No, I did not say that. I'm not, I'm not the kind of man. I'm not profane. I wouldn't have said that. No. I have nothing but the highest respect and regard for you. Did you not just say, go screw yourself when I walked out no, here just now? I you did not say I that. I did not. I, I totally misheard that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I heard that. Idiot. Idiot. Right here, right here. This is a uh, this is a copy of the last time I was on this show. This right. is my in introduction. Verify that, right? My introduction, mm -hmm. and on the bottom of it, it, it says, and he signed it. He said to Charles, "All the best." I took this to a celebrity auction thing, and since he's got that uh, number three billboard, they wouldn't give me anything for it. <laughs> I didn't get anything for it. All right, well. I didn't get anything. Oh, Let's take care of take care of that now. <laughs> Work in a country fair. Charles, sit down here. You know, I was uh, talking to a member of our staff a couple of weeks ago about uh, the Heartbreak Kid. 
Oh, what a piece of work that was. Do you have any memories of the Heartbreak Kid that you'd like to share with us tonight? What a, what a fine film. What a nice piece of acting. Paul, can you hear me? Uh, no. What do you mean, no? I don't have any memories to share with you. But it must have been very exciting for you to work with We the... We go over in detail everything I say right. before I come out here, and that is not on that list anywhere. <laughs> That's well, not there, and well, I didn't say that. Maria, we you. didn't talk about memories. <laughs> I told you, I'm telling you. Uh, all right, let's talk about uh, your uh, CNBC show. How's that going? Pretty well, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you, David. Very, thank you very much. Thank you very Do you much. find when you have a show like that that uh, it's always you, wait, uh, changing, that it's vibrant, that it's growing, that it's I want to ask flowing. the audience a question. Yeah. Uh, how many of you people uh, primarily know me, like, say, from the Beethoven movies? How many? And, and how many how many of you would you say know me from the movie Midnight Run with Robert De Niro? And oh, I'm setting myself up here. Wait a minute. The next question was how many of you know me from the CNBC talk show? What, what is this? Your own little focus group or something? Here? <laughs> Do your research over at your office, will you? You get some. Get some phone solicitors working. I don't, I don't have time for this kind of thing. <laughs> Get a Gallup poll, for God's sakes. Charles, how are you? Good to I'm, see you, buddy. I'm glad you asked Now, let's that. talk a little Did bit about something? the... Yeah, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about the show. Is it always in flux? Is it always changing? Are always fine-tuning it, honing it, tweaking it, making it better, making it taking it in one direction and another direction? Is it, it's like a living organism, isn't it? It's always growing and changing. It has to be because you're a living organism yourself. Now, now you understand why when I come out here, I don't let him talk. There's <laughs> nothing wrong. That's you a pretty good that. question, I thought. It is a living organism yeah. that's growing and changing because I'm a living organism myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, you don't have to get pissy about it. Here's the new everybody. thing. We have a new thing. A new uh, thing. Our oh, new, yeah. a new yeah. element on my show. It's on CNBC at 11 and 1. It's where actually I'm on when I'll come out here. I'm on the same time. Right. You can see me on a couple places. I'm That's in a movie on, on Who else is on the show? Run down the lineup for us. When? Uh, on the CNBC show. Who's on? Who is on the network there? Who else has a show on the network? Rivera. Geraldo Rivera. Rivera, yeah. Rivera Live. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, he's working on the Lidberg kidnapping. He's working on the... Yeah. He, uh, Geraldo has Bruno Hauptmann next week as a guest. <laughs> And, uh, Very hip booking. And, and Brian Williams uh, Brian with the Williams, news is, is Williams, right yeah. after. He's a pretty boy. Yeah. Uh, after Geraldo. And before Geraldo is, uh, I'm after Brian Williams. And then before Geraldo is Chris Matthews, who's a very hard-hitting guy. Never heard of him. Very hard-hitting. <laughs> You, in fact, you might do well to does, watch some of Chris Willard's, Matthews. Because you could, if you were a little harder hitting, <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. Does Willard still have a show Willard over there? Willard Scott? Yeah. The birthday hour or something? Didn't he have a show over there? <laughs> Where people would call in and he'd wish them... I, maybe people I'm call in and he wishes them a happy birthday. It's, you know, it's a building show. It's not where they want it to be right now. Yeah, they feel in time yeah. when enough people get to hear about it that yeah. it will grow. As the population gets older... Yes, and they're counting on that. And it is inching up in the ratings. But, it really the, is. but the point I'm making here, Charles, yeah. is that you, yeah. you are the anchor of that network. I, you are the, the, uh, the I'm foundation... The, when you say CNBC, backbone. you'd say... That's right. You're the only brand identification... Rivera that, that, Live. They, no, nobody. But, you know, oh, we're no. all tired of Mr. Mustache. No, no, he's fabulous. <laughs> Investigating his mustache. You know. Who but he found that? it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, tell us about the anyway, new thing. Anyway, the new yeah, element sure. is this. When, you know, this, this, this really this bad thing because I'm friendly with, uh, with Kathy Lee and Frank Gifford. Actually, oh, I've been to their gosh, house. Yeah. And, I, and you're supposed to be, but, you know, that doesn't stop you from doing jokes. <laughs> but I'm not doing jokes. I'm not doing, you know, and I, I felt bad about it. But I did, you know, what we learned, one of the things that happened, this, is, this actually happened, it evidently is legal to tape something like that because they had the permission of the woman. You can actually, in other words, if you go into a hotel room, and the man or woman you're with uh, chooses to let some magazine tape whatever you're going to do in the hotel room, it's not illegal, evidently, because they've got it and they're broadcasting it and everything. Well, yeah, but it just seems to me like there ought to be some law that was broken here somewhere. Well, Don't I, you may, think? May, maybe there is, but that's the new element of our show. Uh, we're, since you can video, we've got, if we make, for example, your girlfriend and I in our office has been, have been in touch, and uh, <laughs> we've got her permission to to tape. In fact, we've got it. We've got you a... <laughs> oh, 
What are you saying exactly? I'm saying. I'm saying that we've, we've got all, all we have on you, we've got you in this shower. It's no big deal, right. but we got you at your home right. having a shower. And Did I you was, use I was the very, long lens? No, no. We, we... <laughs> Did you use the wide angle? That was my second no, that's choice, not bad. depending that's on what right. I was doing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we've got that. So and, I'm, and, I'm showering. And, 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 you know what got me, though, about you? Because I don't know if, if, all, if how many of you are familiar with the Climb Every Mountain. Yeah. It's not. The Von I don't, if this yeah. guy alone in the shower is going to be singing. Uh, and that surprised me. That you were, that's what you were singing, <laughs> climb every mountain. Yeah, right? well, so what? And you did, then you did Ebb Tide. Ebb Tide, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was surprised. You yeah. know, come on, Rob. Ebb Tide. And, that, and we have you singing Ebb Tide. Yeah. First, the, you yeah. don't have to tell you. Rushes in, plants a kiss on the shore. Paul, and Paul's not even paying attention. What else is uh, going on in the show, Charles? Charles, Charles, we're done. Let's move on. Do you have a, well, do you have a, do you have a band on your show? Yes, we have a 40-piece a uh, oh, orchestra. Yeah. Oh, nobody could afford a 40-piece band. Yeah, never a 40-piece How's orchestra. your family? Your family well? What your do you mean, good? how's my family? Is there anything on that list that says anything about my family? I can't inquire as to the welfare of your family. We, I've, you're, I've you're, met you're your just family. A, you're an anecdote in our house. <laughs> You know, this is true. Last time I was this on, this, be said, good. this is true. He, this will be he nice. He ran into my wife and, and, and son, yeah. who was eight, I guess. Nice at the, kid. Uh, I was very impressed by yeah, the he kid. Yeah, he's in a store up in the area. You know that what we I like about the, your son? What's his name? You're Jerry? You're trying to work here. You're trying to. What's his name? Get a What's your laugh, son's name? You know? Is it Jerry? Nikki. Nikki, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he was with uh, a lovely woman. That's my your, wife. Your wife, yes. Yeah. And he comes right up to me and he says, he puts out his hand and he says, Mr. Letterman, I'm, I'm uh, Jerry Groden. Charles Groden is my father. It's a pleasure to meet you. I was very impressed. He has excellent manners, very courteous, very polite young man. And I shook his hand and I said, no, good no, for you. No, no, no. You said, uh, I gave him a five. You said, good for you. Oh, I did. I did You say said, that. good for you. Like, I, oh, good for you. No. And my wife, he did. He did. And my wife called out, who's not an aggressive person, but under the circumstances said he thought it would be all right. Uh -huh. If he came over and said hello, because I've been, you know, I've been on this show for for 15 years, and many times we I consider come out you here, a great friend. And he's really, you know, dying. It's there's no laughs at all. <laughs> and I've come out, you know. So you think you can say hello to my kid? Be honest with us here. And he said, "Good for you," you know. <laughs> But after my wife said it would, he thought it'd be okay if he came over. He was very nice. Yeah. After you, you didn't even look up to see my wife. No, 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 no. I no, said, because you're not I that said, aggressive. I said, "Good for you." <laughs> I did. I just thought because I have such high regard for you, and here I've met uh, the, this fine young man. Because let me tell you something here. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me go tell you ahead, something. Go ahead, snotty. Go ahead. Go ahead. A lot of the kids today yeah. are punks. Yeah. This was a very nice, very courteous, polite young yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And so, as a result, I, I rewarded him, because you got you to reward him. You punished him. I did you not. You punished I him. Said, good he, for you. No, you said, oh, good for you. Oh, good for I you. I did not. Anyway, you're an anecdote. I think this you're is an, an example. Anecdote. This is an example Look how, look, look how long parenting. he's really to talk on this bit, because Who he's in it. Who brought it up? Because you're in the what? bit. You brought this it thing up. is going to go not on forever. Fault. It's not, it's not the on the page. Who brought it up? I didn't say, how's my family? Uh, you said, how's good my for family? You. <laughs> Can I get you a mint? <laughs> well, now, say something about the show. Tell folks what's going on in the show, the show now. Is, it's a, you know, I don't know if anyone's interested in, like, entertaining television late at night. <laughs> well, I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I really, I really didn't mean it that way. I'd like to be on the show sometime. I'm sorry, we're booked. <laughs> But anyway, if I don't sing my song now, you're going to have to go to a commercial. Oh, great. You got a song? No. Oh. I just like that line. Yeah. You know. that's, hey, what are you doing? The girls will be here. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Anything else you want to say before you have My to new go? movie is opening. You know, I don't, yeah, know, I don't, I don't know. plug, I don't we ever, plug we anything. Ever do you know why? You know, we ever do another movie? Never. Why you know, not? will you? What? 
Oh, I'd like to. I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like to be on the silver screen. Want to do another screen. movie? You want to be in a film? How about you and me, like a buddy film? Like a buddy film. Like a Like a sequel of Midnight Run. There you go. Yeah, you and me, and maybe we'll ask the other guy, De Niro. No, just you and me. Yeah, maybe you know what Wait a minute. What about me and De Niro? And that would be great. Why don't you do that? Now sit here and do the show. Sure. Hey, is that a replacement? Would it be so terrible? You know, that's what I said when I guessed it on Tom Snyder's show. Maybe I'll be the host. Would that be so terrible? And two weeks later, I was the host. You had the show. And now, if I say it to you, would it be so terrible? You take a couple weeks off in the summer. I consider I could keep it. And no, I can read jokes too. <laughs> no, I can do that. <laughs> anyway, no, I, I, I said, I said as I was waiting to come on, I said, you know, not that many people would think that, you know, they think, oh, you're going to come on the Letterman show, you're right. up in the green, you know, this is this is not, this is like, this is like the reason. This is the, one of the major reasons to be alive, to be able to come out here and, and sit here with this, with this guy. Because, because, oh, oh, God. because I'll tell hysterical. you something, I'll tell you something. Oh, the God. air conditioning, the air conditioning vouch for me is so pleasant. It's like going up Everest, ain't it? It's so pleasant it? in this room, and I really appreciate the opportunity to Charles experience Grodin, it. Charles Grodin, ladies and gentlemen. Good out here, bro. Nice going. say one thing. We don't want to leave people with the wrong impression because we've known Charles Grodin for a long, long time. And he's been on the show many, many times. And every time he comes out here, there's always something interesting taking place. I just want you to know one thing. From my heart, seriously, know this about Charles. He's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'm going to set the record straight there. Ladies and gentlemen, out there, Marvin Vinny. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work, buddy. Keep up the good work. Nice going. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, here in my left hand is tonight's top ten list. Let's take a look at that. The category tonight, uh, top ten good things about performing a concert uh, for the Pope. It was, it was announced uh, earlier this week that uh, Bob Dylan will actually be uh, performing for Pope John Paul II September 27th at the World Eucharistic uh, Congress in Bologna, Italy. Good gig, that Eucharistic uh, Council. That's, that's a good gig, ain't it? What, what is this? Excuse me. Hello, he hello, we're right in the middle. Oh. <laughs> hello, yeah, we're right in the middle of a show. Uh, uh, Dave? Who is this? Dave Al Herman from the Home Office. Just a... Uh... <laughs> Just a heads up, uh, buddy, uh, the, uh, the top ten tonight between us, uh, not that funny. All right. Thank you very much, Al. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks just, for looking out for Just a heads us. up, buddy. I appreciate it. All right. Okay, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, wow. Apparently, we have a home office. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the category, top ten things uh, Pope John Paul II, uh, top ten uh, good things uh, about performing a concert for the Pope. There you go. And uh, see what uh, Al knows that we don't. Top ten good things about performing a concert for the Pope. Here we go, number ten. Post-show party at Vatican City Hooters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> number nine, you suck doesn't sound nearly as bad in Latin. Number eight, if he likes the show, he'll let you break the three commandments of your choice. Number seven, Pope always a good sport about getting hit in the head with a beach ball. Number six. Cool to see Bishop show up in full kiss makeup. Number five, standing ovation when you tear a picture of Sinead O'Connor. Number four, unlike the Dalai Lama, Pope doesn't get impatient during the long drum solos. Number three, get to see firsthand when they call him the stage diving pontiff. Why they call him the stage diving pontiff. Number two, you don't exactly have to compete with him for groupies. And the number one good thing about performing a concert for the Pope, half the crowd is loopy on incense. No idea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to pause when we come back. Lawrence Fishburn from Hoodlum will be joining us.
sole guest tonight is David Letterman. Well, I have been a guest on David Letterman's uh, show uh, for 15 years, and tonight is the first time he has uh, uh, agreed to appear as a guest on this show. Even though he has appeared on other shows, he's appeared, I think he's appeared on Larry, uh, what's Larry's last name? Larry King. Larry King. And Tom, uh, Tom's last name? Snyder. Snyder. Mm -hmm. uh, but tonight he will be my, my, my sole guest. And it got me to thinking about all the times over the years that I've been a guest. And when I was the first, the first time I ever appeared on a, as a guest anywhere, was on a uh, show, it was in the mid-60s. I had directed an off-Broadway musical called uh, Hooray, It's a Glorious Day and all that was the title. And I appeared on an FM radio uh, show, it was called uh, Broadway After Dark and the host was Bobby Maurice. And I went up to Bobby's apartment, it was up in the uh, West 90s, up in the area where, that I lived at the time, and his living room, he had a few microphones and uh, there were three or four of us around this microphone of Broadway After Dark with Bobby Maurice. And at the end of the show, uh, where it came out that I was promoting this off-Broadway musical, uh, the other guests on the show gave me their pictures and resumes. <laughs> so I said uh, to Bobby, before I, you know, put my coat on and left, Bobby, um, this FM radio show you have here, where is that... Uh, uh, how widely is that heard? Uh, and he said, uh, what street do you live on? <laughs> I said, I live on West 92nd. He says, we, we get as north as West 57. So I didn't quite get up to my uh, street with Bobby Maurice. And then later that same year, my first television appearance on the Joe Franklin, the uh, legendary Joe Franklin television show. And he introduced me. And now, this is an off-Broadway musical that didn't run. And he introduced me as uh, the hottest young director uh, in New York. And for that brief moment, I thought I was the hardest young director. You know, they say it to you, and I, just, and I realized that that's what Joe did. And one of the reasons he was on the air for 40 years. And then around 1973, I had just opened in my first leading role on a bra in a, bra in a uh, movie, Heartbreak Kid. And I, uh, I was going to appear, the idea was that I should now start to appear on television to help promote the movie. And I was uh, told to expect a call from somebody named Bob Dolce, who was a talent coordinator for Johnny Carson and The Tonight Show. And I was in my apartment at the Upper West Side, and Bob Dolce called, and we chatted for about 20 minutes and had a really good time, at the end of which he said to me, you're a very interesting guy. I think you'd make a very good guest on The Dick Cavett Show. <laughs> and it's nice to have talked to you. I put the phone down and I thought about it a minute, uh, not even realizing that I was auditioning. I hadn't realized that the whole phone call was an audition. I just didn't know. It was, it was the first kind of pre-interview that I had ever been exposed to, which we don't do on, the, on this show. David Letterman has not been, <laughs> not only not been pre-interview, but not even told anything about what I will talk with David Letterman about tonight. And I called Bob Dolce back and I said, uh, wait a minute, uh, basically you're saying I, should be a, I shouldn't be a guest on The Tonight Show. What is it you require to be a guest on The Tonight Show? He says, well, do you have any funny stories? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I got funny stories. I, didn't, I wasn't aware that when we were talking you wanted. And I told him some funny stories and they flew me out immediately. And I was on The Tonight Show uh, for the first time in 1973, in January of 73, at seven minutes to one. At that time it ran from 11.30 to... Uh, to one, and I followed uh, a medley uh, from Diana Ross and her greatest hits, and it brought the house down. And I enter at seven minutes to one um, following this huge star, Diana Ross, at the time. And, uh, and then three weeks later, uh, Johnny Carson asked me back, and that time I was on at 10 minutes to one. I've given 10 minutes instead of seven. And then the next day, I was uh, in my hotel room, and uh, I get a phone call that Johnny Carson wanted to put me under contract, which I was astonished by. I didn't, I never, I didn't know such a thing existed. And the idea would be I would be on every three weeks with Johnny Carson, and uh, I think he had done it once or twice before with uh, Joan Rivers and David Steinberg in all those years. It was incredibly flattering, and then I went on with Johnny, and uh, but very quickly I began to be self-conscious about just having these pre-interviews and telling stories that were arranged and all of that, and uh, 
And I started to do something else. I started to just kind of go in a different direction, not talk about myself, not talk about promoting anything. But, for example, if I came on and the audience hadn't been that responsive prior to me coming on, I would say to Johnny, you know, this is not really that great an atmosphere for comedy, and, you know, why don't we run a clip uh, of a previous appearance where I, you know, was getting laughs. And I, I don't, I, Johnny says, who I've seen, spoken to, uh, about this with since, because I wrote about this one of my books, and he took exception. He says he didn't ban me. Johnny claims he did not ban me, but I didn't appear with Johnny for like a year at a time, two years at a time, and I appeared with all the other uh, guest hosts. In fact, at one time they considered having me be a guest host, and then, uh, but they thought I was kind of, I may be too strange uh, to be a guest host, and that kind of, that idea, that idea uh, went away. And then uh, at some point, Johnny told me this, I think, I don't know if it was on camera or off camera, he said, you know, I, I never knew what to do with you, and then I realized I could do anything with you and that opened the door for what I've been doing on talk shows with Johnny Carson uh, uh, from that time on of, of anything anything I could do anything he would ask me a question and I would say I can't answer that question because you don't really you're not really interested in the answer all you're interested in uh, is making the money and taking it back home to Malibu and he says you're absolutely right that's true I have no interest in your answer so I started to do that and a lot of people thought that was kind of weird and strange and I was difficult and right around at this time on the scene emerges David Letterman uh, actually chosen by Johnny Carson to be uh, the person following Johnny Carson on NBC so by the time I first started to appear on David Letterman 15 years ago this is what I was doing, uh, developed with the relationship with Johnny Carson. So let's run a clip, Bridget, of the, uh, of the type of stuff that I, almost, uh, that I immediately started to do. It's a little montage of what I started to do. Just create conflict problems is what I did, because I didn't want to promote or talk about myself. I thought, I mean, who cares, really? But this is what I did, let's, uh, if you would, with David Letterman over the years. This is the conflict uh, montage, if you would, Bridget. She's like your wife in the film, isn't she? She is my wife. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's all true. It's nice out here. It's cool. It's warm backstage, but it's cool out here. Did you did you leave your medication in the dressing room, Charles? Do you have any medication? You know, you said something very insulting to me, and I let it go right by. That's the kind of guy I am. That's how gracious I am. You said, I haven't seen your show in four or five months. Well, let me tell you something, pal. Hey, that was... I, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Wait a minute. No, 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 I'm, talking wait to you. I'm talking to you. What? What started to happen was we began to watch the show, realizing you were grinning. You were grinning and smiling a lot at, for no understandable reason. And we started, <laughs> instead of enjoying it, started to get edgy. <laughs> As though we were in the presence of maybe, you know, I mean this in the nicest uh -huh. possible oh, yeah. way, early right. dementia. <laughs> I'm sure it's not, but it's really nice to be here. Here is a, uh, here is a clip from my, uh, you know, a lot of people said David Letterman, he's mean, he's this and that. I never found him that way with me. But here is a, a, a clip of my last appearance uh, with David Letterman, if you would, Bridget. Where, hey, where the hell are you doing? Charles, get over here, buddy. Come on. This is, this is not cable. Working? We can't waste time. Is get this over here. working? Wait a minute. What's the matter? You know, he, a lot of people don't want to come on the show because they feel that he's, he's not nice or afraid to come on and stuff like that. And I'm not because I've been coming on for many years. You're a good, good friend and, of ours. I, Thank you very much, Charles. Yeah, but that's not what you just said when I came on. He, he actually, he said, he said, go, he said, go yourself. That's not true. Yes, you did. Is that, that's what he said. He just said, go screw yourself. Did you not? No, I didn't did say you that. Did you not? Did you not? No, you're making I'm asking you. Did you say it? No, I did not say that. I'm not, I'm not the kind of man. I'm not profane. I wouldn't have said that. No. I have nothing but the highest respect and regard for you. Did you not just say, go screw yourself when I walked out no, here just now? No, I you didn't. You did not say I that. I did not. I, I totally misheard that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him I was going to do that either. I, we ju I just said to, to, to let the cameraman know I'd go anywhere, but he didn't know I was going to do it. Of course, he didn't say it. And now, here's, a, here's a, the last clip I want to show. When it first came up, the idea that I might have a talk show, this is what took place, if you would, Bridget. 
You can do everything. You, you write to plays, you write to... I could also host a talk show. Oh. <laughs> Takes a mighty big man to do that, Charles. Yes, well, we'll see. Ever since it's been announced that I'm going to do my own talk show, I'm coming out later and later on this show. And that's the first time he ever said, and tonight, stupid Patrick! Charles Grove, done a comedian. I can remember that. You know, this didn't happen until they announced I'm doing my own show. You know, and you're the only talk show host that I didn't get a gift from when that was announced. So yeah. don't tell me this is well, a I just gave you ten damn dollars. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> now, David Letterman has a billboard up on Broadway that says he's number three. When he was number one, he, he chose not to have a billboard. And uh, the only reason he's not number one right now is the network that he's on, CBS, doesn't give him enough uh, lead-in uh, power, or else he would be number one. If he was on NBC, in my opinion, he would be number one, and I'm a fan of Jay Leno as well. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking with David Letterman, a man who has walked among us uh, for 15 years, uh, and we really don't know who David Letterman is. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't literally walked among us because he doesn't leave the house. Um, but we will try to learn tonight uh, who is this enigmatic David Letterman, and we'll be joined by David Letterman when we come right back. Be right. David, can I have a, uh, a sound check in multiples of four, please? One, two, no, three, four. No, 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 excuse four. me, David. Yeah. Multiple, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, can... <laughs> I'm sorry, I went to a state college. <laughs> four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six, forty... Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you like uh, I want to get a, I want to get a couple of uh, essentials out oh, of the way know, first. Uh, Are you talking to me? Yes. What is the, uh, the, your insurance? My insurance? Yes. I think it's uh, Allstate or, or Farmers. Is it a group uh, plan or? Uh... Yeah, it's a group. Should be a total package. It's the umbrella package. Mm. Term, f whole life. All right. All right. Uh, and how long since your last uh, television interview, please? Um, it's been a while. It's been a while. I think the last one might have been... Good Lord, I don't know. Oh, it might have been uh, Tom. Tom. How long about ago? A year ago? About a year ago. About a year. So it's been a year since you've been since my last interviewed interview. on television. Yeah. All right. And are you are you taking any medications? No. No medication whatsoever. No. Although here talking to you, I feel drowsy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like to just to say a word to the audience, uh, please. You know, All right. uh, your birthday. Four twelve forty seven. And your height. 6'2". Really? Yeah. Your weight? 170. Mm -hmm. Mother's maiden name? Uh, Hofert. I'm sorry? Hofert. H-O-F-E-R-T. What's, uh, what's the derivation of that? I believe that's, um, let's see, what would that be? That would probably be, mm, I think, German. Any Swiss in there? Might be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Letterman is a Dutch name. My father, uh, his Excuse ancestry. Excuse me, David. Is Dutch. David, yeah. please just answer the question. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, in case of an emergency, who do we uh, contact? Um, well, it's, uh, I think the people at CBS, because I'm certain they would be the last to know. Right. <laughs> and uh, and when did you uh, last eat, and what did you eat? Uh, you know, this morning I had a, one of those power bar things. That's all you've eaten today? And some grapefruit juice. Mm, together? Mm, kind of coincidentally, yes, but not by any grand design. I've been to the dentist today, too, as well. Yeah, for what, what type of thing? I'm having a, 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 a filling replaced. Mm -hmm. Does your coverage uh, take care of that? That's a cash deal. That's a strictly cash thing. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, <laughs> how, many, uh, how many fillings would you, just generally speaking, how many fillings do you think you have? I'd say I probably have uh, a half dozen on the bottom and maybe four on the top. How many on the top? I'd say four. Total maybe of ten, a dozen at the most. Is that, is that uh, average for a man your age? I, I don't know. I think it's probably higher. It's certainly higher than I would like. But it, as you probably know, when you get yourself on one of these schedules, you don't, you don't have a, a lot of time to do the kind of personal maintenance a, a person might want to. Now, you have bathed today. Do I have what? You have bathed today? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Is that a shower or a bath? That would be a, a shower. All right. I find it invigorating as well as relaxing. <laughs> and would you describe your feelings as we uh, get ready to begin this interview? 
Uh, I'm sailing, uh, saying a silent prayer that, uh, that, you know, that we were, I was under the impression we were nearly half finished. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will begin. Oh, that wasn't, we haven't begun? No, we were beginning. Oh, that was, we, we, we've been on, but I haven't gotten, I just wanted to get some essentials uh, established for the audience. Okay. Because people don't really know who you are, and I wanted to get that Thank clear. You. You know, okay, all right, well then, I'm ready to go then. Okay, now where were you born, please? I Indianapolis, Indiana, St. Vincent's Hospital. What time of day, please? I think it was early morning. Mm -hmm. And what is the extraction of, of, of Letterman? You said, the, is, is your father... Uh, I believe that's Dutch. Dutch. I think Letterman is a Dutch name, yeah. You think? I believe so. When I was in Holland, uh, looking through the phone book, uh, you know, out call service, that kind of thing. I came across um, uh, the name Letterman in, in the white pages there. Why were you in Holland? I was there uh, years and years ago to see uh, uh, the, uh, went to a Formula One race at, uh, in Belgium at uh, Frankershamp Spa. You did? Yeah. <laughs> and what do you, now what would you be doing if you weren't doing this? If I weren't talking to you right now? Yeah, what would you be doing normally? I'd be asleep under the house. Under the house. <laughs> under the house, yeah. Was there, is there an area under there you can crawl in? Is yeah, there the a, crawl space. A crawl space yeah. in there? Yeah. And you're, you're comfortable there? Well, it's the only place I find on my property that, that uh, stops the radio waves invading my brain. I see. And it, 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 there's quite a bit of that, isn't there? Oh, is there? you don't need to tell me. I mm. mean, you're no stranger to this. No. no. <laughs> and your father's occupation? My father's occupation, yeah. well, he owned a flower shop. He did, mm -hmm. and uh, and your and your mother was a homemaker. Uh, yeah, homemaker, and also helped out um, at the store, mm -hmm. and was for a while was a kino runner. <laughs> what is that, that kino runner? You know, when you play the kino, and she comes and picks up your slips, I offers see. you a cocktail. I see. All right, and <laughs> you explains have, the game, the odds, that sort of thing. You have siblings. Yes, I do. And uh, would you describe uh, their names? Uh, I will describe their names, Charles. <laughs> I'll describe the one name as a little like the name Janice. <laughs> a little and like I'll, the name Janice? <laughs> yeah, a little. And I'll describe the other one's name as a little like the name Gretchen. I see. You have two sisters, I would uh, take. Oh, I'm there. sorry. I thought we were talking about siblings. Forgive me. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get going now, here. Now, do you, I will in a moment. This yeah. is the whole show, though, so I want to do some establishing stuff. Right. Do you miss anyone? Do I miss anyone? Yes. Um, yeah, sure, I miss a lot of people. Sure, I mean, do you, miss your, I, do you miss your sisters? No, well, I just I spent some time with my sister and her family a couple of weeks ago, so I can't really say that I, I miss them. Uh, but we had a nice time, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What'd, you, what'd you just do there with your nose? <laughs> I think I, I nervously uh, kind of just pulled at it like that. Are you nervous? I'm uncomfortable. Right. Why? Because you think this isn't going well? <laughs> no. Well, it's not going at all. But, uh... <laughs> now, many times when I've spoken to you, and you can see I'm speaking to you in a different manner than I normally do. You're I... being stern. No, I don't think I'm being... Hey, we don't use that name on this show, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. But you are—you you seem to have a, 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 a great attraction to the subject of grooming. You yeah. referred to my son as well-groomed. You always right. use the well-groomed. Right. Why? Well, I mean, I make no apologies for uh, first-rate personal hygiene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why? Is that something that's important to you? Yeah. Or yeah. do you consider yourself well-groomed? Well, I, I, I do what I can. I mean, look what I was given to work with. <laughs> what, Consider what, that. What constitutes well-groomed? What do you have to do to be well-groomed? Nice, freshly scrubbed, shiny face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clean hair. Mm -hmm. you know. And what does the word eponymous mean? Uh, eponymous, I think I, I know this from having heard you explain it. I believe it's self-titled like the Charles Grodin show Because I've been reading the research on you, because to tell you the truth, I didn't know a damn thing about you. Mm -hmm. uh, it said you had two eponymous shows, and right. that's what I thought you might know, but you only know that from hearing me describe it. That's right. And that's you, right. as a weatherman, you, you, you said that there was hail the size of canned hams. Mm -hmm. Was there criticism uh, because of that? Uh, if, if we continue this line of questioning, and, and moreover, this tone of this line of questioning, I'm going to have to seek counsel. No, I didn't. No one said you couldn't seek counsel. I thought you had counsel. <laughs>
Now, were you criticized as a as a kind of an irreverent uh, weatherman? I'm back oh. in your beginnings now. I, I, I probably so. I, I think that it was w what passed for irreverence in those days, by comparison these days, is so mild as to probably have gone nearly unnoticed. You know, the, the, when I look at you, and I'm gonna, I'm going to be serious for a minute. I, I realize you're a guy who's been on television for. I don't know, you're 15 years with your show, before that you appeared in other things, and, uh, and yet it is true about you that nobody really has any idea what you are, who you are, mm -hmm. what you're like, no one ever sees you, you don't go anywhere, uh, right. you have said you don't really want to go anywhere, right. where would you go? Well, you know, it's, uh, as you describe uh, me, or your impression of me to me, uh, it puts me in the mind of another uh, popular uh, figure, uh, Zorro. <laughs> you know, nobody really knew much about uh, Zorro. Nobody knew that he was. There, people suspected that he, in fact, was Don Diego. Right. But no one knew it for a fact. No right. one could prove it except for a, a small group of Confederates who knew it and, and guarded the, that. Uh, Do you think that's secret. a key to the long run of Zorro and yourself? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> no, I mean, do you deliberately, uh, I mean, you don't, you don't go anywhere, you're not photographed anywhere, you don't, you're not seen anywhere. Is this part of the mystique of, uh, you're probably dying to get out, but you think of that you get out and people get to know you, it's all over. Um, uh, Mr. Groden, can I go home now? Yeah, right, okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, and now one more, now how much time before we go to the break? We went to the break, right? Uh, just one more quick, what did you just do there? Uh, again, uh, nervously, uh, went to my face like that. It's kind of, kind of a Marlon Brando, mm, that kind of thing. Who's there with you right now? Who's uh, off camera? It looks like day laborers that you sent over with the <laughs> with the equipment. Mm, do you have anybody from your staff there? My assistant is here, and uh, we have an engineer. Uh, Pete is here as well. Is Rob Burnett there? No, sir, he's not. Mm -hmm. You don't have to call me, sir. We're going to go to a break, and we'll be right back with David Letterman. Hang with it; it's going to get uh, worse. I love David Letterman. He, I think he totally revolutionized comedy on television. He's one of the best. I love his stupid pet tricks. I love you, David Letterman, because my boyfriend's 3,000 miles away, and you keep me company at night. He's really, really cute, and I just think he's the best late-night talk show host there is. And, and I used that last one, even though it upset me a great deal when I saw it. I, I want you to know. Well, it upset me a little bit, too, because it's not true, and I, I appreciate you throwing that in there. Well, we'll throw it in there because there, you won't get any of that from me. And we're going to go to another break, and we're going to come back, and it's almost over. Uh, give him some Novocaine. We'll be right back. David, Chuck, so happy to see you two guys together, sitting there so comfortably. You know, I get so concerned when I see Chuck on with David uh, on his show. I, I get nervous. I don't know. I think something's going to happen any minute. But now to see you two relaxed, you know what? Why don't you make a date and visit each other at each other's homes? Break bread together. Drink wine, have fun, hang out together and just relax. I love the thought of it. And if you have chance, invite me along too, okay? Have a great show, guys. You're the best. I love you both. But remember, she's always watching both of you. <laughs> now, what really strikes me uh, is how little chemistry we have under these circumstances. Right. Uh, it, you know, that it's such a, you know, when I, if I come on and I, you know, I'm angry at you uh, when I'm on your show, seems to work so well but if i'm like trying to be civil and you know just straightforward with you mm -hmm. i mean i could just imagine us doing what Reed just said and sitting there saying what well, how did this happen we're sitting there there's a glass of wine that we're sharing and uh and, and it's it's deadly why do you think that is well I, I don't think that it would be i think that it would be great fun i, I think the estrangement yeah. uh, we're both uh, feeling now has to do with uh, geographic circumstances but I, I think... Oh, that, you mean that it's the first time I'm with you that we're not together? Yeah, that's right. Well, my, the, the people, the management here couldn't believe that I wasn't going to go over to your office and do this. And I said, right. now, if I go over to Dave's office, then I, there's, you know, there's a lot of people that you'll say, why not go to this guy's suite? Why not? And I said, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, Dick did that. And then look what happened. You know, I'm not going like, to just travel with a crew. So that's why I wouldn't come over there, you know. Oh, that's all right. You it's, it's your show. I understand yeah, perfectly. Yeah, but, but I feel it, too. There's a terrible estrangement. There. I missed the 700 people laughing. Well, I'll tell you what the problem is yeah. for me. Yeah. Not, the, not that it's a problem yeah, in well, the grand sense problem. of the word, no, but I'll tell you what the problem is for me. I, I'm still not sure that we have begun the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, there, to me, is no empirical data to support this one way or the other. <laughs> well, I mean, what are you looking for? When you, when you knew you were going to do this with me, what were you looking for from me? I mean, when you sit there, 
Would you like to be, you know, you said that you, never, you don't want to talk about what's personal to you, you find right. that dreary and dull, and I'm counting right. on you not doing that. Okay, I here's what I was looking for. What here's what, yeah. here's a, a, as yeah. having been in broadcasting for a long time, yes, this is have. what I was looking for to indicate that the interview was about to begin. Yes. I, was, I was hoping I would hear from you or a technician here in the room something like, okay, here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you didn't get that. No, I didn't that get that. It really undercut uh, yeah. the whole thing. Uh, it, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there is a place, and as you know, uh, you know, you and, for that matter, Regis and I do live in the same proximity. Many people, uh, talk show hosts, uh, Phil Donahue, uh, Don Imus, uh, I forget, there's a, there's a number of people that live right mm -hmm. in that little area. Jack Parr. The, the, Jack Parr lives right where we all live. Right. Uh, and, you know, I, I, at, a, at a restaurant that I go Dinah to... Dinah Shore, I think, used to have a place up there. Merv has got a place up there. I, well, I'm, I'm with Merv every Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Mike Douglas, I think, has got a place uh, up there. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing Mike tonight. Uh -huh. Now, <laughs> now there, is a, there is a small room. There are several small rooms in a restaurant, private rooms in a restaurant that I go to that's very close to my house and therefore your house. That if, that if you wanted to go there with Regis, I wouldn't go there alone with you because mm -hmm. this might happen in person and I couldn't handle that. I'm too tense for that. Right. I don't mind, you know, television. But if Regis were there, you, Regis, and me, nobody else except, of course, a reporter, because, you know, why do that if it wasn't going to be a story? Uh, will I have Regis arrange that? Would you do it? Um, I, yeah, I would do it as, um, as kind of like an experiment. Well, that's what it would be an experiment. Yeah. This is kind of an experiment. Well, I, I'll tell you what the deal is. I'm, I'm, um, I'm so fond of you. I used to do this with Jack Parr. Uh, Hal Gurney, um, my beloved director for many, many years, was uh, also Jack Parr's director. Yes. And he would arrange almost exactly what you're describing. Well, there. you went to Jack's house. Went to Jack's house. We went to restaurants. We, you know, we had right. uh, a series of these uh, engagements where we would, you know, dine and chat and so forth. Right. Uh, and, and I just found it... Uh, too difficult to not be disappointing to these people that I finally had to kind of pull out of the little uh, social... What was the expectation that you felt you weren't living up to? Well, it's the same that uh, has existed all my life. Whatever it is, it's, it seems to me to be uh, unattainable. In other so, words, they expected something from you. You were going to be hilarious and you were right. all of that stuff. Which, Charming and witty and, and, and debonair which, which and a need, rock on who, tour. Who needs it? Yeah, and, and I, I knew that I couldn't live up to that because as you know from spending time with uh, uh, Jack Parr, he's very eloquent, uh, very animated, very colorful uh, when talking about, uh, well, himself, of course. <laughs> there is no other topic when you're talking with Jack, but he's endlessly entertaining. And, and of course, you know, all I had to, every now and then I'd say, Jack, is there any more ketchup? You know, yeah, that would have so I just felt that. like now, you, you have to say, Jack could talk about world leaders. Right. And he, and he does. He just probably, you know, didn't Care about no, he that. would talk about world leaders, you know, uh, when they were on his show. Well, and then there was right. the time, that's you know, right. would but, come but, to but see me, but, but and then boy, I compare said... compare you to Jack socially, and you're saying, is there any ketchup? I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, let's not knock Jack if you just defined yourself as a kind of a schlub. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's the yeah, whole but, point but, of this. I'm saying I couldn't possibly would... live up to any expectation. Well, let me tell you something. I was once at a restaurant, and, and I, it was on, I think, 72nd and 3rd. I don't know if you remember this. You were at a group of people at one table. I was at a group of pe with the people at another table, and just your presence in that room ruined my evening. <laughs> because I overheard you say, is there any more ketchup? You know, I thought, oh, man, let me get out of here. This guy is a, such a well, there depressing you go, Charles, thing. The, the, but wait a no minute, I didn't That's say exactly you and I should get I together. I didn't say you and I should get I said you and Regis and me, because if you hang out with Regis, you're going to get the inside dope on, on, on Kathy Lee and what's going on, all that behind-the-scenes mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. that is not heard about on the air. And I know, in spite of your shaking your head, no. you'd love to know what the deal no. was there. No, I have no interest. And, and, and uh, Regis is, is like a vet animal that's got the wrong injection. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, my God. Oh, geez. Well, put him in a, and let him cool off and don't call the owners. I mean, he's like that. You know that. Now, when you were in school, in college, you said you, you went out a lot then, but you were drunk all the time, That's right? right. That and was the, now the alcohol was yeah. the key to overcoming this, uh, right, this feeling. shortcoming that I have. And yeah. you're, you're feeling like I'll never live up to what people expect That's of me right. when you come in. That's right. And, I think and many people suffer from this. It, did, you, did you stop drinking at some point? Yes, I did. You totally don't drink? Nothing. Why? Because I felt it was, well, for one thing, it was controlling my life. 
Well, and, I don't mean I don't mean go out and get life. drunk. You mean you're not capable of having a couple of drinks in an evening? No. You're not. You think you would do more if you did that? Yes. You would consider yourself, therefore, an alcoholic? Yes. You do consider Are you a recovering alcoholic? So far, yes. Yeah. And how long since you've had a drink? Mm, I guess we're getting near 15 years. Is that right? Yeah. And so that's why you don't do it? That's right. And do you inject yourself with anything? No, I don't. You don't do anything? No. And yet when you come out on television, you're like so lit up mm -hmm. and on fire. Is that just gum or...? <laughs> Yeah, it's gum. Is that it's it? a dentine? Have you ever had that dentine? Yeah, it's, oh it, it, man, it does, does it give you a, boost. a But that sustains you through an hour of television. <laughs> yeah, it's I pretty mean, good. Stuff. I mean, because you're flying, and I look at you sometimes, and say, "My God, what the heck?" And, and you, it's either, but you also you eat some chocolate, don't you? I, occasionally, I'll have like fruit or chocolate or some coffee. Yeah. So I would say, if you were to meet Regis and me, just get some, yourself some fruit and chocolate and coffee. No, it wouldn't go. And then just sit there and and it listen to go. what Regis has to say. The, the the only possible way you could have that conversation with Regis, and you know this, and and by the way, I love Regis, and I think, and I have said so. I'm on record as saying, f for what you and I do and what he is doing. For what we're all trying to do, I yeah. think Regis, without question, easily the best. Hands down, pound for pound, the most entertaining personality on television. Are, are you, are, you must feel that I way. I agree. I think yeah. he's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, but to be in a social situation with him, I would only do it if there were some sort of state-licensed official in the room with us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was divided into like two or three-minute rounds. So that every two or three minutes, he would, someone would come in and settle him down. You know, we would go to neutral corners and maybe refresh a little bit and then come back in. But one straight shot, no, it would be suicidal. Uh, 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 well, we're, I want to I come back to this because I'm not going to give up on this because I didn't realize that you'd, you wouldn't even have, because I understand. I mean, I, I frankly wouldn't want to see you with a, a, at least uh, something. <laughs> You know, and if it's not going to be nothing, I have reservations too. But let's let, let's go to a break, come back, and let's let's revisit this and see what we can do. We'll be right back with David Letterman. What makes David Letterman the success he is is that the guy has absolutely everything, aside from the basic requirement, which is an outsized sense of humor and the fastest mouth in the world. He's good looking. It's very important. He has a beautiful body, and he has a wonderful smile. And that gap tooth in the middle turns it from just a handsome smile into a slightly goofy smile. He can get away with anything, be as Johnny Carson could, because he has that corn-fed Indiana naivete, a little boy thing. Uh. David, I was struck the other night I was watching your show and uh, you've always talked about, you know, your top 10 lists from the home office and all this, the home office, that and the home office, this. And you got a phone call right. from the home office. And, and, and I, you know, tell you the truth, I always Al thought Herman. Home, I thought that home, uh, Al Herman was his name. Yeah. And I, I always, uh, I always just assumed the home office was a total joke. So, but I got from that that there actually is a home office that does provide the show with some material. Is that the case? Yes, absolutely. We, uh, we get a packet of uh, material, yeah. bonded courier, yeah. comes in every morning. And uh, with what you get in that package, you ought to be able to do a fairly entertaining television program each and every day. And are there, the, what are there, writers at the home? What is that? I think it's a lot of computer stuff. I think that they're able to, to with computer modeling, and I, I'm, believe me, I'm not familiar with the hardware or the software of it. I've just heard the term computer modeling. They are able to construct a cyber version of a, a talk show, right. and then, then we, we get the residue of that. Uh, the fellow that called the other night, I, I believe he's new. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not talked to him before. Uh, but I'm happy for any input, and he seemed like a very nice man. So yeah. we have a, a thing where uh, once a year we, you know, fly everybody in, and we have a little, uh, you know, reception, kind of a meet and greet. So I'm sure I'll meet uh, Mr. Herman then. Yeah, at that, at that point, I, I actually, for the first time, I didn't even realize. I thought it, all we, it was a joke. No, it's a pretty big thing, and we employ out there in, in Oahu, I think about 1,100 people. Wow. And, and so it, it, it helps the economy. I think it's a source of pride for them. It's a nice place. It's, you know, it's like one of those... Uh, um, uh, industrial plant kind of, you know, extended mall sort of thing, low two-story building, plenty of parking, mercury vapor lights. It's nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> now, I, you know, you, you have said that, uh, that a lot of the people that come on your show, and it would be more true of your show than my show or even Regis's show because you have the, the big audience and, uh, 
the, the present audience and the, and the viewing audience that they don't realize that it is a performance and they actually literally want to come on and say what they've been doing and what's coming up. Uh -huh. That does not anyone warn them that it is that it is not that no one really cares about what you've been doing and what's coming up? <laughs> we can. <laughs> oh yes, I think they're warned. Yeah, well, they're told straight away. I think they sign some kind of a verification that you know they understand that I don't care. Right. <laughs> they right. know that we have absolutely no interest and yet, in them whatsoever. And yet, some people still come out and insist on saying what they've been doing and what's coming up. It's hard to fathom, isn't it? But yes, <laughs> it is it to does me. <laughs> it is to me. <laughs> And I got that message after about, you know, two appearances on Johnny Carson back in the early 70s that that would be, you know, the death knoll. And, and then, uh, and because Johnny, you know, just straight death out knoll? said he did You say care. death knoll? Is it Nell? I think it's, I think it's Nell, but I'm again, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. You're death not? knoll, you know, puts me in the mind of the, the grassy knoll. Yeah, it does. Yeah, well, we're, 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 we're suffering enough here. We don't have to go to that. Yes. But, but let me just mention one thing that uh, uh, people often ask me, as I'm sure they do you, well, who... Who are your favorite guests? And I always go to you because uh, uh, the dynamic that you bring to the show for me is perfect. You you come in to the theater and immediately uh, put me uh, on the defensive, and I think the audience also is placed on the defensive, uh, and then we just sort of uh, go from there. And and I like that. I mean, it it gives the impression that you are prepared, and we know, Lord knows, you're a busy man. You're certainly not prepared, no. but it creates the impression that you are yeah. just with this little uh, adjustment of your attitude. And and I love it. And 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 I wish. Uh, you could be with us, uh, you know, more certainly more often than you are. Well, I now why why is that, Dave? You know, you you were very generous, and you sent me a fax after the last appearance, which I appreciate. In fact, it's framed. It's it's not laminated, but it is framed. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is it that I'm? Uh, you you say you wish I you know could be on more often. In fact, with the fax said, you wish I could be on every night. Right. Let's let me let me try uh, cite another example by way of illustrating this point. Yeah. Donald Trump, Mr. Hoo ha, yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. And and the, the truth of it is, I don't know Donald Trump, and and sort of what I do know of him, I think like everybody else, you kind of resent because he's wealthy, he's powerful, and and he thinks he's good looking. So you know, you have three <laughs> three reasons to resent the guy, and and uh, he hasn't been on the show in a long time, and and he was booked to be on the program, uh, I think after the. Uh, the the Miss Junior Cub Scout pageant or something, uh, and so I was not particularly looking forward to it, just for the reasons I described to you. And you know, it always depends on what mood you're in. And so anyway, here comes Donald Trump, and he's got something wacky going on with his hair. You know, they've done some done some wind tunnel thing, and you know, looking to lower that coefficient of drag on his hair. Uh, and so he comes in and he sits down, and he was great. He was just great. And I thought, well, you know, this is funny. He's great because. Here's a guy, you can't knock him over, you can't, you can't dent him, you can't wrinkle his suit. Undeniably, he's doing things, he's got things that he does, he doesn't care about me. You know, he can live a long, happy life without ever being on my show again, and he has no problem telling me that. So there was that, I don't even know exactly what that was, but it, it turned out for me, Again, to be a great deal of fun, much in the same way that your visits. In other words, you you're mo you find most of the guests that kind of resent being there or don't <laughs> need you. <laughs> I don't. I mean, maybe that's part of it, but I, I do. I do like the idea that here's a guy you 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 know you can ask him ab about a million things because here's a guy who does a million things, you know, and and I can ask you about a million things because you you know you've had a long successful. Uh, career and, and life and show business and you're a, a lively intelligence and you're an active human and you know that, that makes it all much more fun a great deal easier yes so anyway uh, <laughs> so why don't I come on more than once every three months I, I think you probably uh, are busy I'm not busy I'm free come on over well, wait, we're talking about, I'm asking you, do you want to have dinner with Regis and me and try it once? Mm, um, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it really does to me, too. <laughs> I didn't know you didn't drink. I, you know, I, I really didn't know that. I mean, because See, I, it's easier to be Mr. kind of gadfly, right? Mr. sort of like, oh, party, party. Well, what, when you, when what you're does drunk? that mean, gadfly party no, party? I'm talking know. about a private room upstairs in a restaurant yeah. with, with some injections that you've never uh, experienced before. <laughs> it won't violate your non-drinking pledge. Yeah, I went to, you know, a long time ago, I went to uh, uh, dinner with uh, Don Rickles. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was uh, one of the highlights of my life.
and pretty much the circumstance you're describing right here. So maybe, you know, this is something we can do. I don't think, you know, before the end of the millennium, because, you know, there's going to be festivities, there's going to be parades, there's going to be public appearances, there's going to be the big countdown calendar. Yeah. So I think we'll have to wait till the, the, you know, the next century. But, you know, let's look at it right in there. Yeah. Did you talk to Johnny Carson at all? I haven't spoken to Johnny in um, a year or so, a couple of years, I think. I, I think I talked to him on his birthday, I, I believe, when he turned uh, 70. Is that possible? Right. I'm not sure yeah. when that was. Yeah. 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 About two years ago. Yeah. And did he answer you? <laughs> we had a little chat. I, we, every now and then we exchange notes. We exchange, uh, uh, I send him uh, something, you know, on his birthday each year. He, uh, I got a, I don't know whether you've ever gotten this, but I got a residual from him uh, for the, the Carson Classics tapes right. that they sell. And I got three, actually, and one was for, uh, two of them for two dollars and something, and one was for three dollars and something. Mm -hmm. And I, I sent him a note and said, I always like to think I, I, uh, I, I was a, a tiny part of the success of The Tonight Show. I just hadn't realized how tiny. <laughs> and, he, and he sent me back a note uh, that said that that was a bookkeeping error and that was uh, overpayment. Ah. So, so, uh, but does he come east, you know? I think he was. Uh, I think he comes east on his way to uh, Europe when he goes to Wimbledon, I believe. But I, I think not. Not much more than that. And when I was with him, he he he, he asked if I was be interested in going on a safari with him. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested in anything like that? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. I would not. You would not. No. Well, what is it? Now you know. I, I, you know the question. The, beg the question. What you said before. You like the guests that attack you. Are you are you are you attracted to women that disdain you? I'm sorry, am I what? Women I mean? that disdain you, that don't think much of you, that right. don't need you, that, that don't need to be there. Is that the kind of woman that's like, kind of like catches your eye? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I, I sort of enjoy that. I mean, like, like anybody else, every stupid guy in America, every stupid, jerky, dopey guy, still in the back of his mind, thinks under the right circumstances, might have a shot with Julia Roberts. <laughs> you know, it ain't gonna happen, but it's it's just guys. You know, it's just dopey guys. You know, well, you know, I don't know. Hell, I just well, you know, she might. You know, you never know. She might like, you know, get, sees me on the riding mower or something. You just never know. <laughs> well, now you've had her on your show, and you seem to be working at that right there on television. Well, she's pretty nice, I, and I don't believe me. I don't understand it, but she's been really, really nice uh, to me and to the show. So have, we're... Has, has a date ever come out of those appearances with Julia or any other uh, lovely woman? Well, you know, for me, and this is the way uh, I'll tell my uh, grandkids the story, you know, for me, those appearances are dates with Julia Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's as good as it's going to get for me. That's the best so kind I'll, of day. And believe me, I'll die a happy man with that because I get to, you know, she comes out, I get to uh, hold her, I get and to put kiss, my arms too, around if her. I, kiss. If I, if I, yeah. I think on You're the lips, am I yeah. right? Right on the lips. Right oh, on the yeah. lips and I oh, hug and a kiss and after yeah. that it's trouble anyway, wouldn't you say? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, why? Well, uh, perhaps your experience suggests Well, but trouble, you don't but pursue it. we got 30 seconds. Why don't you pursue it past that? Well, she, you know, she doesn't want me pursuing yeah. that, you know? I yeah. mean, look at this. I mean, think of it. You're Julia Roberts. It's like... Oh, maybe this guy? No, I don't you're think right. So. You're right. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, we've, we've, come, to, we've come to the end of this. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's oh, been it's thank been you, thank you very God. much. Uh, we're going to take out big ads and run this until the millennium. You know, it would have been better if, if you had just let me know we had begun. Right. Well, I will. Let, we're going to begin in about ten seconds. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, thank you and God bless you and your sweatshirt. Thank you, and I'll be right back with a final word. David Letterman uh, for uh, appearing um, tonight. Um, a very interesting guy, uh, a guy that's brought you know so much uh, happiness and laughter to so many people for uh, for so many years. You kind of wish that uh, all the happiness and laughter for him. And I will pursue this idea of getting him with Regis and me and uh, get some laughs for him. So thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Good night, mom. I love you.